contradictions of our time, the blood of men and women who paid the ultimate price to make sure that there is a restoration of democracy in Uganda is crying out and crying out loud. It continues to call upon the unfulfilled promises, the broken promises and the blunted lies that have been ongoing in our country. We have seen this throughout the 35 years, the 35 years of blood and tears under the repressive regime of blood and tears under President Museveni. When he moved to remove the age limit from the Constitution and crown himself president for life, it began as a joke. In fact, he initially dismissed it. He denied it in the beginning, but it took only a few weeks before the parliament was raided Members of parliament were bribed, and some of our people were killed fighting for the survival of the remaining of our constitutional order. Many of the Ugandans, you and I, thought that this was the last, I mean the worst we had seen. Nobody believed that there was any worse anybody would do to stay in power. But now we all see that a dictator will go to any height and any depth to keep in power. Museveni, like all dictators before him, is determined to keep in power at any cost. He does not care what happens to Uganda or Ugandans, for as long as he still occupies the state house. Fellow Ugandans, occupies the state house. I'm reminding you that Museveni is at it once again. He recently met the Electoral Commission and he gave them orders to organize what he called a scientific election. Using the coronavirus as an excuse, he is banning public rallies and other aspects of a normal election as we all know them. I want to tell you that no Ugandan should be fooled into believing that Museveni is doing this for the safety of Ugandans. Because as we speak right now, most urban places are filled with people. No social distancing, no nothing. And if you want to prove the words I'm saying, you go to Chikubo, go to Natete, or go to any urban center that you can reach first. We have seen normal elections going on, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen them in Malawi, We've seen them in Burundi, and as we speak right now, in America, a place that is much more affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, is having elections this year in 2020, and they are having normal elections. In fact, yesterday, the U.S. president was holding a public rally. Therefore, we should not be fooled, and Ugandans should not be taken for fools. As you all recall, ladies and gentlemen, there was no coronavirus when our consultation meetings were stopped. There was no coronavirus when Museveni personally ordered for the blocking of all our shows. So we must all by now be knowing that what Museveni fears are the people and not the COVID-19. He is hiding under the COVID-19 now, just like he was hiding under the Public Order Management Act then. He fears the people. He does not want us to reach the people. Therefore, nothing, I mean, there is nothing like a scientific election, ladies and gentlemen. For us, what we're going for is a real election, a real election as envisaged by the law of Uganda, a real election as prescribed by the Constitution of Uganda.
people, he does not want us to reach the people. Therefore, nothing, I mean, there is nothing like a scientific election, ladies and gentlemen. For us, what we are going for is a real election, a real election as envisaged by the law of Uganda, a real election as prescribed by the Constitution of Uganda. Constitution of Uganda. Ladies and gentlemen, a free and fair election means that everybody who has a right to vote can actually go and vote without being blocked, without being influenced by bribes or intimidation. It means all candidates are given equal opportunity to convey their messages to the voters so that the voters can make an informed choice. I've said this before and I will say this again, that I, on behalf of the millions of oppressed and exploited Ugandans, will be taking on President Museveni in the forthcoming election, which we expect to be in six months. Let me say this again. I, on behalf of the millions of oppressed and exploited Ugandans, will be taking on Museveni in the next presidential election in 2021. Let me also use this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to put President Museveni on the notice. Mr. Museveni, you might have forgotten what you said in 1980, but we have not forgotten. You, Museveni, put Obote on notice on the eve of the 1980 election. You said that if Obote rigs the election, you will go to the bush and fight against him. We have come to that point right now yet again. And we are telling you that you either organize a free and fair election or step down peacefully. I say that again. We are telling you that you either organize a free and fair election or you step down peacefully. But if you continue provoking Ugandans, Ugandans will rise up against you and you will end up in the dustbins of history like your friend Gaddafi, like your friend Mobutu, and like your friend Omar El-Bashir. So take this. Amen. Amen.